Hello friends, in this video we'll be taking a look at the autosomal DNA predicted phenotype traits and GED match results of a individual from the Caucasus, a Yamnian individual from the Caucasus from Stavropolsky Krai in southern Russia. Uh, his Y DNA was R1B, Z2103. Um, I don't know about the subclade, but R1B uh, is pretty common in Western Europe today and his mitochondrial DNA is U5. Uh, moving on to appearance, this is what he looked like. Maina Shakot 2 was predicting him to have brown color eyes, Greek shaped nose and black hair. Uh, my eye shape predictor tool is actually predicting him to have South Asian eye shape. And for my hair shape predictor tool, that's predicting him to have straight hair. So you see the image, the way I depicted him in the image is kind of how I think he looked like. Maybe he had a little bit lighter skin because if you look at his genotype in SLC45A2, SLC24A5 and ASIP, he seems to have a lighter skin pigmentation. He does not have BH1 or any of the other blue eye haplotypes that follow, so definitely very dark color of eyes and hair. And he does not have any derived variants in MC1R. Uh, he's got some derived variants in IRF4, but none in the main IRF4 mutation that has to do with red hair and blue eyes and pale skin. So there is no uh, reason to think he had any kind of red hair or any kind of tendency towards red hair. Uh, and he had some genotypes in Tyr region for higher odds of blonde hair and blue eyes. I found I thought this was pretty interesting because uh, these are kind of rare variants that aren't commonly found in Europeans today. Moving on to GD match results, this is what he scores with Eurogene's K13. As you can see, even though this individual was from uh, the very south of European Russia, from Stavropolsky Krai, uh, on the border with Krasnodarsky Krai, this individual is not a Mycopian, this individual is a Proto-Indo-European. Uh, the majority component in his ancestry is not CHG, right? The majority is, is Easter Hunter Gatherer and whatever else admixture he has besides CHG. Uh, this is what he scores with MDLP K11 Modern. As you can see, there is a lot of Caucasus ancestry here. 41% EHG, which rep really represents Caucasus Drift. So there is a lot of Caucasus hunter-gatherer admixture here. But still, it is not the majority of his ancestry. And with the Oracle, he is closest to Russia EBA, which is exactly what it sounds like, early Bronze Age Russia. Uh, that's Yamne, pretty much. And with the Oracle, he's actually getting more as a mixture of seems to be Yamne plus Irish Bronze Age or Bell Beaker, a mixture of Yamne plus some later in the Europeans from Europe. Uh, this is what he scores with Pond DNA LK12 and you see here, aside from the 38% CHG plus 44% European Hunter Gatherer, there's some Anatolian admixture that's present in this individual. He's closest to Yamnens from Samara uh, with the Oracle. However, you can see this Anatolian admixture is present um, and there's a little bit of a shift towards various Western groups such as Sintashto or Skiffians, you can see it at the bottom, but there really is a shift. And you don't see this European father, farmer admixture with every calculator. For example, here with PanDNA LK10, he's not scoring any ENF. There is no sign of Western Western admixture in this individual at all. When you look at this calculator, he's closest to Mordvins, followed by Russians with the Oracle. And he's actually getting more of a mixture of Lithuanian plus various South Central Asian groups here. But if you look at his results with ancient Eurasia K6, for example, here you see there is a lot of shift towards Western groups. He's closest to Step EMBA, which is exactly what it sounds like. Uh, Yamne, however, he's actually getting more of a mixture of Yamne plus 26% Bulgarian or Yamne plus Romanian. So there is a shift here towards uh, people who have farmer, European farmer admixture. Uh, this is what he scores with Kidrosia K3. Uh, pretty interesting, mostly West Eurasian. This is kind of similar to my result, except I score like 3% more East Eurasian and like 2% less Sub-Saharan African. I score 1% SSA, 12.5% uh, East Eurasian, and he's scoring kind of different. But it's it's a pretty white guy, about as white as I am in terms of admixture. Now we'll be taking a look at his traits with my trait predictor tool. Let's go ahead and uh, choose the file, which is this file. We're going to name it R. Alright, so he's got GG and Combs Valmet variation, which means Valval Val, Val genotype or Warrior genotype, uh, which means less dopamine in the system, uh, quicker dopamine reuptake. He's got AA in uh, DRD2, so he got uh, he got less dopamine in the system and less dopamine due to re receptor availability as well. So just from looking at this, this guy probably has some attention problems, some problems with attention and motivation, uh, and um, probably not a very good. Uh, in terms of patience and learning in school. So he's got GG in TAC1. Well, this is good. So he does not have the A1 allele in TAC1. Uh, at least in this variation, he has a little bit more dopamine to receptor availability. Um, he doesn't have the A allele here. Um, 
we don't really care about any of this. He has TT here, which in 5-HTC LPR, which is a typical genotype for most humans, that leads to uh, short form 5-HTC LPR. Just like most of you guys watching this video, you have short form 5-HTC LPR, uh, which means you have slightly higher odds of depression, some trouble transporting serotonin, whereas individuals with long form 5-HTC LPR uh, have a decreased risk of depression and, and um, easier time transporting serotonin. So this individual is typical, just like most of you guys, watching he's got short form 5 HTC LPR for lactose persistence does not carry the European lactose persistence mutations for the empathy gene heterozygous here which is associated with intermediate OXTR expression and average levels of empathy for diabetes he's got CC here which leads to sevenfold decrease in the risk of type 1 diabetes for Alzheimer's CC here which means no APOE2 alleles probably does not have Alzheimer's and he's got TT here, which also leads to a slightly decreased risk of Alzheimer's. So it's pretty safe to say this individual does not have Alzheimer's. Um, although we can't really say, actually we can't really say that without having his genotype here, because this is the most important variation here. Uh, these two are the most important ones. So you, if you have one, you can't just rule out the other. I don't think they're linked. I don't think these two are linked. And are, I don't think they are inherited together. So you can't impute one based on the other. Uh, miscellaneous section does not have micro p you know what that is i'm not going to pronounce pronounce what that is but does not have micro p pretty cool um better performing muscles likely sprinter more sprinter than endurance athlete uh, no fat gene variants in ftos uh, this variation pretty interesting probably uh, does not have any struggles with his weight um and TT here in OCT1, which means lower odds of cannabis-induced psychosis. So if he is free to smoke cannabis without any kind of psychotic effects. Well, I think uh, cannabis does come from Central Asia. And Yamnayans did cultivate cannabis for its psychoactive properties. Like, they literally smoked weed. I don't, think why, I don't know why Europeans stopped this practice of smoking weed. Um, but, like, in antiquity, in the Bronze Age, for example, our European ancestors were really big on smoking weed, especially people in the steppe. So he's, it's probably pretty useful for him to have this genotype which protects him from psychosis induced by cannabis. Now let's check polygenic risk scores. Okay, and for polygenic risk scores, he's got, let's look at that, 0 0.16 times the average odds of schizophrenia for Northern Europeans. So much lower odds of schizophrenia than what's typical for Northern Europeans. Like, literally, like, this is six or seven times less so this guy is six times less likely to have schizophrenia than the average person uh, for type 2 diabetes he's got pretty much average slightly above average odds for diabetes and he's got lower than tip than average odds for alzheimer's well that's pretty much all the reason i wanted to talk about for this genome thanks for watching my video until the end you can download his file in 23andme format from link which is in the description and leave a like and subscribe goodbye